proper liturgy for Ash Wednesday begins on page 2 in your service leaflet or on page 264 in the Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's, God's mercy endures forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also God with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, 
but they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Earlier today, actually tonight, I was recalling with Reverend Nathan about that it was just about this time last year when we had started to hear rumblings of this virus that was starting to spread. And I think we were wondering when would it come to this country and what would that look like and how would this be for us? And that only a couple of weeks from now, we actually had our last in-person service and Reverend Nathan was reminding me that it was uh, an all-chapel service, so everybody was here in this space, and it was packed with the school, our our students from St. Martin's the Field Episcopal School. And that was our last time that we gathered together as a full community to worship. And so it seems to me as we kick off this Lent again, where my heart is, is that even though Easter has come and gone, And Christmas has come and gone, and Epiphany has now come and gone. It feels to me a little bit like we've not ever really stopped having Lent. It feels to me a bit like we have been forced to give up so many things, forced to fast from so many things. For many people who have not been able to be here at church to receive Holy Eucharist, We're going on almost a year, and that must seem like an incredibly dismal fast at the very least. So tonight, as we think about Ash Wednesday, the start of this season of Lent, I wonder what else we could possibly give up that would make it seem any more dismal or that we could acknowledge any more our wretchedness. If you're like me, I think you felt pretty wretched from time to time since about this time last year, plus a couple of weeks. So to re-acknowledge that, to bring that to the fore again, seems a bit like the record playing the same song just again and again and again in my mind, in my heart. But I think that there, what this pandemic has taught us is that maybe absence does make the heart grow fonder. I, for one, have had a wonderful day today, this morning and this evening again, seeing many of you and being able to put ashes on your forehead and tell you that you are dust and to dust you shall return, and then to catch up for a couple of moments if we could. That little taste of connection with people, with our congregation, with our parish family, has meant the world to me today, and I thank you for it, for those of you who stopped by for ashes to go. Matthew's Gospel gives us some pretty good things to do in secret. And truth be told, it feels like we've been doing a lot of things, again, and because of the pandemic, in secret. There's certainly been an absence of people in this space, and as much as I would love to say I've gotten used to preaching to you being at least 112 feet that way up on the wall of the camera, I can certainly tell you I have not. 
but it feels like maybe that this, even on this night, it feels a little bit in like it's in secret because there's only five of us here and there's all of you there. I cannot wait for this Lent to be over, for this pandemic to come to an end and for us to be able to worship together again and to see one another, to be able to hug one another or even to shake hands, put a hand on a shoulder and ask, how are you? And look into somebody's eyes and not be six feet away from them. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. There have been several moments over the course of this past year where the thing that has kept me sane and kept me alive is being able to pray. To go to a place where there is nobody else those of you who have children at home, I bet you're with me on this one, to go to a room and to shut the door and to be quiet and to just sit and block out all of the noise and the sound that is around us. And for me, it's been to pray. And while I don't know that my prayers have always been answered in the way that I thought that they would or in the manner that I thought that they should be done, God has God's way of God doing God's things, it was wonderful in those moments to be quiet, to block out the noise or the chaos or the anybody else, or even the sense of just being in a wider open space all by myself, to be quiet and to pray to God and to have that connection again with God. In a moment, we will be invited into a Holy Lent where we will say that we will examine ourselves for who we have become, for things we have done and things we have left undone, for the ways that we have walked farther away from God instead of closing the door and reconnecting with God. This season of Lent will provide for us an opportunity to practice some of those things to put an emphasis on the fact that we are gods, that we are indeed mortal, that we were formed from dust, and to someday we will return back to that dust. And to give thanks to God for the goodness that God gives us, even in this time of separation, even in this time of pandemic, even in this time of feeling apart from one another, we are still richly blessed by God. As we pray through this season of Lent, I invite you to find what are the treasures of your heart. To find what it is that God has given to you in your lives that you hold dear, that you hold fast, that makes you who you are and makes you more who you were created to be because you have been given those treasures. And although we may be in a season of loss, the as, one of, as another priest earlier today said, the lentiest of lents. We have these gifts and we have these treasures that are bound to us, that have been given to us, that God has blessed us with, that we must hold fast to, especially in this time of pandemic and loss. And so I invite us into this holy season of Lent to think about what are those treasures, to find ways where we can close the door and be with God who sees us in secret and who knows us, who knows all of us, all of our foibles, all of the terribleness of us, but also rejoices over the fact that we were created in the first place. I invite you to reconnect with God and to remember to give God thanks for those things that are the treasures of your heart as we begin once more this holy season of Lent. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection. 
and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our life and death and our need to be forgiven, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Please join me in praying a portion of Psalm 51, as found in your worship bulletin and on page 266 of your Book of Common Prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness 
O God of my salvation, open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our, un our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We, we confess, confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We, we confess, confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We, we, we confess, confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We, we confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess, confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept, Accept our, our repentance, repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept, Accept our, our repentance, repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our, our repentance, repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, Bring, Bring us God with all your saints into the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere heart believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace. That's peace. Peace. I would say that we have a whole lot of announcements, but we don't. 
What I would say is that if you would like to give a special offering on this day of Ash Wednesday, there's the link that's present in your bulletin. Please click that and to make an offering to the working of the church. And if you haven't signed up for uh, any of the classes that are upcoming or Lent in a Box, I think it's a little too late to sign up for Lent in a Box, but the other classes uh, that Nathan and I are teaching uh, starting next week on Tuesday, actually we start on Sunday with Lent in a Box, and then Tuesday and Thursdays, uh, there's still space in both of those classes for more, so uh, please sign up today. Thank you. Bow down before the Lord. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.